Hi, this is Susan Bennett, the original voice of Siri. Here's what's coming up today on another great episode of On the Nose with Randall Kenneth Jones, the new Jones Dodd Show podcast. That was the day I found out my purpose, and that from that point on, my path became more directed towards songs of love, of learning to come together, bring people together by the heart, through the heart, through understanding, compassion, how important that everything begins and ends with love. If you believe that everyone you meet knows something you don't know, then you're ready for the next bold evolution of the Jones Dot Show podcast. On the Nose with Randall Kenneth Jones introduces you to people who are in the know and ready to share their special brand of know-how with you. From artists, authors, and activists, To entertainers, educators, and entrepreneurs, On The Nose will elevate your ability to influence the world we share. Here's the host of On The Nose, Randall Kenneth Jones. I have an announcement. I'm going to start a new company. It's going to be a tech support company. And that my tech support partner, <laughs> I have convinced Ross and Kind, who, who is known as a vocalist and an actress, you're going to join me because we are excellent at tech support, are we not? Oh, phenomenal. Uh, didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you can ask my team how phenomenal. <laughs> the amount of time that it took us to actually connect today ex- will exceed probably the amount of time we talked to each other. <laughs> Technology was mean to Rosalind uh, and I today. Was yeah. very mean, but we hung in there. Yeah, we did. We, we didn't give up. No, we did not give up. And we started the first time and it froze. And of course, I started with the greeting to Rosalind, my, my fair, my dear Rosalind. Hello, gorgeous. And I was corrected saying there's a better way to say it so you can say your version of hello gorgeous hello gorgeous <laughs> how are you i'm good how are, how are you? you i'm thrilled I, I i'm you know this is not something i expected to happen i'm sure of it and you know my previous interview was it ran late so otherwise i would have found this out earlier <laughs> but but i mean I, I, I did not expect to meet you. Oh, is that what you're talking oh, about? Oh, I'm your fan. No, oh. I'm your guy. <laughs> and you know you know where I discovered you, though? Where? On the nanny. Really? That the first time? Isn't that kind of crazy? And I think that's bizarre that you ha- you were on Ed Sullivan. You were recording as a teenager. You have been around. You've been in the public eye. You've uh, You're an actress. You're a recording artist. And I put the emphasis on recording artists. Artist, artist, artist. I believe that. You have been in the media your entire life, but somehow I missed you until the nanny and then became obsessed. (laughs) I've seen that episode like, well, I'm obsessed with the nanny. I've seen your episode like five times. Well, you know, it was first, it was taped in 1996. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. That's how far back it goes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I have two sisters Paula Brown and Janice Nelson, and you have a sister who people may have heard of. It's possible, unless they they went through life and they didn't really catch up. Lived under a rock. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And your sister's name, Rosalind, what is your sister's name? My sister's name is Barbara Streisand. Spelled spelled Mm B-A-R-B-R-A. Barbara Streisand. Not at birth. She changed it. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah. I know. No, I've read half of the book. Yeah. So my um, name is okay. Barbara. Her recent book, I have read half of it, which is a commitment. I knew everything in it so far, except for one of the films. So I've actually, I've seen every special. I knew everything. I am certainly the Barbara fan in the Barbara era. But how special for me to have discovered your talent, which is extraordinary, and to now have time to talk to you. Oh. <laughs> Who would have thunk? <laughs> no, I didn't think it. I, I, I truly I did not. Point. I did not think it at all. The other connection we have is that I found out my friend Michael Rupert had shared that you were in 
Reading one of, of the mail. original workshops of the of musical mail, mail yes. which I love so, so, so much. Michael has right. done the show. He's my Broadway hero. I thank the world of him, but... I haven't seen him in years. Well, I texted him and said, okay, you know, I'm going to make sure I remember this correctly. And he said, you got it. You got it. Yeah. She was lovely. So... I played I, the girlfriend. I love mail. I played the girlfriend. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. So question, though, let's talk a little bit about Barbara. In what ways are you alike? What did you get from her? You do. Now, it must be genetic because you sound very much alike. That's all genetic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and your mother was a singer as well, correct? Our mother didn't sing professionally, but she was the soprano in the family. She could have done mm -hmm. opera, mm -hmm. but she grew up in, in a time where, you know, it was a bum's business years ago. Mm -hmm. Women didn't do that, you know, if you're a lady or whatever. But And because our grandparents came from Russia. They were immigrants. Mm -hmm. And so they didn't believe in that. But uh, my mother had a gorgeous voice. As a matter of fact, when we were on the road in concert, we played some of her stuff over the airwaves. So she, we said, Ma, you finally made it to the O2. <laughs> <laughs> you made it to the Hollywood Bowl. So, yeah, no, but it, it comes from our mother who got it from her father. So is our maternal grandfather. And it was passed down, passed down to us. And then my sister passed it down to Jason, who has a great voice and has some lovely music, great music coming out. Your nephew, Jason Gould, who continues to record himself, who is yeah. also extraordinary. It is. I, I believe it's genetic. We haven't quite figured out where my voice came from. No. Definitely. No, yeah. I heard, I sat next to my grandma in church, and no, it wasn't her. And um, been next to my dad, and and my mom and my dad, and wasn't mom. I think my dad probably could have really sung, have ever really done it though. Uh huh. I think that really, really probably came from him if he ever would have done. It. So, in what ways are you like Barbara, or what did you learn from her? What what has she really passed to you? And it can be artistically, or it can be from a life lesson. To tell you the truth, I mean, I've, I've, I've watched my sister's career, and I mean, she's, I, I couldn't be prouder of her. But we are very different people. We are very different, um, and our performing styles are different. Mm -hmm. um, and she would never, you know, it's like if I would ask her her opinion on something, it's one thing, she, but she doesn't offer because she doesn't want to put who she is on me. Because well, then I understand that. Yeah, there is enough of a difference, you know, and I have to do it. We don't always agree on that stuff, you know, but then there are times where I wanted to do a song and kept away from it because she had done it. And every, she said to me, why shouldn't you do a song that you want to do? I said, because sometimes other people, it's like, well, years ago, I was playing at a club in, um, oh God, where was it? in Minnesota. Was it Minnesota? You were in a club. We're going to go with Minnesota. No, let's go to Wisconsin. I think it was Wisconsin. Oh, Wisconsin. And, um, and I did a song that so many covers were done on, but this particular critic thought it was my sister's song. She did it. And why am I doing my sister's song? And it was like from the summer of 42 or something. How many people cut that song? I have a song I want you to do, and I believe your sister has done it. I want you to do Come Rain or Come Shine. I've done it. Is it recorded? Can I hear it? Because I went through uh, everything. And I thought I knew your catalog, your recorded catalog. Uh, I've done it. Uh, I don't know if it's on something that came out, but I did it in my shows. As a matter of fact, when okay. I first came out, it was one of the songs in my first performances that uh, when I first signed my record contract, it was right after I did the Ed Sullivan show and I went to The Hungry Eye in San Francisco. And that show, that song was in my show. Oh, I love that song. It is featured in my book. Uh -huh. And so the book I just published recently called Ruby, and it's featured in the book. And so it's something that's just very special to me. And it, it's featured probably in part because I love the song. How do you choose what you're going to record? Well, I have to choose songs that I, I relate to in my heart. If I can't relate to them in my heart, I can't do it because I, I need to be honest in my interpretation. So sometimes somebody will show me, oh, this is an absolute hit. This is a hit. And I, I, I you know, if I don't like it, I'll say, you know what? It's a hit, but not for me. I, can, I don't believe it enough to be able to make it a message coming from me. This is why I say recording artist. That's <laughs> why I emphasize that. The other thing I love about you 
is your emphasis on the lyrics. I do not, I'm a writer, I'm not a lyricist, but I'm a writer. And I don't think lyrics get the love they deserve because so often music is recorded in a way that you really can't understand the lyrics. Yeah. And that's not the case with you. No, I, I, I milk every word. Uh, when, I was, <laughs> when I was studying acting with Milton Katselis, and I, you know, a friend of mine studied with him after. I had to leave because I was, uh, doing, uh, got hired to do a show and they didn't want us working with any other acting instructor. So um, basically, um, my friend went to study with Milton way after I was there. And I didn't know this. She said, there's a book. He wrote a few books. And I never saw it. But she said to me, I saw it in the book. He said, you need to act like Rosalind Kind sings. Isn't that interesting? That is let me, let me, I'm going to quote a couple things. I'm going to quote a couple things. The London Times, at some point in time, has been quoted as saying, to say she is superb would be an understatement. The New York Post has said, she's so good on so many levels, it's difficult to categorize her. This elegant, beautiful, petite, dynamo delight rules the stage with a royal command that demands admiration from every seat in the house. That's my Rosie. That's <laughs> you to me. Oh, I thank you. That's you to me. Thank you so much. I just, I just really believe in those words. When I believe in them, I, I love telling stories. As a matter of fact, my new release is two songs that are favorites of mine that. I did separately on their own at different times and different shows, but I came up with the idea when I was doing a new show, what that would these sound like together to create a, a storyline? Your new release came out on Valentine's Day. Right. Talk about it. Let's talk about it. Okay, because we're here to talk about it. So I'm obsessed with the video. For one thing, Tracy Toms is in it. Right. I love, 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 love Tracy Toms. Yeah. I'm obsessed with the video. I'm obsessed with the storytelling. The video strengthens to me. It's actually one of those videos that to me strengthened my understanding of why the mashup occurred. Right. Because it's such a linear story in the video. Oh. How did this happen? And how did you choose the two songs? Well, I did that because those were the two I put together that I wanted to do a video of. It was my yeah, video. Yeah. It was the first, this is my first time producing. Mm -hmm. I've never... All my previous videos were stock footage that my recording producer and I put together and made a video that went with the song. And it worked very well, but I had never been. Everybody says, you need to be in your videos. And I had never done that before. So uh, it was, oh, it'll be a year, March 9th. Actually, we discussed it in January, but I met, first met with my director, Monique Impagliazzo. On March 9th, we met for the first time to discuss the video had that I wanted to do. And um, we ca I, I came up during the process. I came up, where is it? She would say to me, well, what, what do you want the story to say? What do you want this, you know? And um, I just said, it's a love affair that happened in your youth. And for whatever reason, I didn't put all oh, like, you know, they fought. Because you, you can split and it has nothing to do with fighting or you didn't get along. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. life takes you apart for whatever reason. And you go your own way and, you know, he has his life, you have your life. And at some point, and we don't know why, when it's picked up in here, we run, we run into each other at a French bistro. So many years later, maybe 40 years later, and recognize each other. We don't know what my life is. Can I comment how much I loved the other loving couples? Yes. Tracy Toms is part of a mixed race couple. Yes, yeah, right. And you have a male couple, a right? same-sex couple. That was my other Because message. I know yeah. that love in all its forms is important to you. Yes. And I thank you for that representation. I thank you very much for that. I believe in that. You chose the look of love, Burt Backrook and Hal David and the island. And I realize I'm not going to pronounce Ivan Lins and... Yvonne Lins. Yvonne Lins and v Vitor? Vitor Martins. But... Alan and Marilyn Bergman. I mean. <laughs> English lyric. And you put these two together. Yeah. 
in such a way that I just, I just think it's absolutely amazing and so beautiful. And then to have, I really, everyone go search this. Rosalind has a YouTube page. It's very easy to find. It's so beautifully done, you know, and then I, I, the other message, the other message in it is finding love after a certain age, not to give up on it. So my two messages was love is love is love. And for women, because even friends of mine say women have a lot of problems with this later in life. Don't give up on love. It can happen at any time. How be does open, that resonate with you personally? It. How does that resonate well, with you personally? I'm, I'm open, but I also was regressed in 1984 when at that time I was just breaking up my marriage, which wasn't very long, but we still loved each other. And um, I had a regression because I, my career was like side to side, up and down, and my marriage was on the rocks. And I thought, I, I, I need to find stuff out. I was very much into uh, psychic phenomena and the new age. I climbed Bell Rock in 1987 during the Harmonic Convergence. I'm very spiritual. And uh, I went and had a regression, and I only went back to one lifetime, where I was a man in a turban and white pantaloons and sandals and a stone hut, and I had a love for whom I was having a duel over. And during the duel, accidentally, she got killed. So... I have been looking for that love lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. But in the word associations with this regression came world, harmony, peace, love, understanding. It was all about world healing, not so much one-on-one -on -one love. That was the day I found out my purpose and that from that point on, my path became more directed taught songs of love, of learning to come together, bring people together by the heart, through the heart, through understanding, compassion, how important that everything begins and ends with love. And if we all came from that place, other than the greed and the power and, you know, and, and not understanding other people who might not look at you instead of embracing it and learning about each other and expanding each other's lives, if we had that, we'd be heaven here on earth. We wouldn't have to go to wait to go to heaven to find. I don't get why this is so hard for people to figure out. I really don't. I don't hear I it. don't. They, they can or cannot agree with or understand your regression. I don't care. I support your process. I support your, and I certainly support spirituality. So many people who come on this show have talked about different aspects to religion and spirituality and what is meaningful to you and works for you. Absolutely. If you stand on the side of good over evil, I am there for you 100%. But I also believe that your concept of love in the world, making the world a better place. I mean, we've heard that before, but you really live it because you live it through, for example, the sea angels. It's not just your music. No. So for you, I'm seeing a way of life. The She Angels uh, gives money, we raise, and every month the check is given to a 501 organization that in some way helps girls and women mm -hmm. to advance, to give them more opportunity. Plus, it's a lovely networking situation where everybody is for each other. But Which is extraordinary. Yeah, and women need to be there for women because we, you know, we ha we're pretty powerful, you know? And we've got to, and, and we're powerful to do right in the world. You know what is frustrating to me? Because there are so many organizations, so many podcasts, so many days, so many groups that celebrate women. They really do. It, it, it's out there and it's become so dominant. And I celebrate all of that. But who is out there making men be better men? They have a long way to come. We got to train yeah, I know. <laughs> We've got to shout out and voice ourselves enough for them to learn. Like, remember when your mother used to say you did something bad and she would take you, I didn't hear you. <laughs> Sometimes, I don't know, and, and I've made a promise to myself. I don't like narcissism. I don't like bullying. My heart goes out when people are not sensitive to others in pain or that there's wars going on and people don't get it. It's like one side or the other. One, They're both suffering, but... One is, you know, it's just, 
you want to be with each one for their reasons, but you have to come to an understanding and, and communicate and compromise. And I don't know why it's so hard for men to do that. I don't understand. And it is men. I mean, you know, to pretend otherwise is a little bit silly, but it is men. I, I don't get it. I don't get it. And I've always, you know, we were raised to always give charity and be good to others. The temple I went to said essentially it was to everyone, not just Jewish people. It was to everyone. How oh. do you deal with a world gone wrong? How do you? Because you, you've got a sensitive heart. I, I know this. This hurts you. This hurts you. And all the songs in the world can't fix that for you, Rosalind. How do you live in a world that is so broken in so many ways and hold your head up high as part of that world? Marching on with my the way I look through my spirituality that I want to bring the light back into the world. If I can be one little voice and get other little voices, because there are angels out there that are filled with light and come from their heart. I know my whole team on my video were that way. And that's the kind of what was so wonderful about our set. Everybody loved being there. They just wanted the, the vision to get done and they were enjoying the process. Everybody loved each other. And some of us just met for the first time. But the love, the realness of everybody's genuine persona and wanting to make just something good, not competing, not hating, not being in competition, but just coming together in love and harmony and peace to create a, a, ma a masterful peace that hopefully has a great message for the world. My word for this piece is actually my word for you. Luscious. Well, uh, thank you. Seriously. I mean, I'm not trying just to say something to make Rosalind happy. I just found your work, your catalog, luscious. And I realized I've never used that word <laughs> to describe another person. And I found this new piece of music the same, and it made me feel good. And I understood the story. Though I am disappointed that it, I understand there was a chance maybe to shove Pierce Brosnan in the background and you didn't do it. I mean, as a gay man, I have to question Pierce Brosnan walks by. To me, he needs to be in the video. My, my, my connection to him is my husband before I knew him stood behind him in line for a show on, in, on the West End in London. That's my connection to Pierce Brosnan. He shows up on your set. Want to talk about that um, little period? We were filming on the beach, yeah. in Matador Beach and the Broad Beach. And when we were on Broad Beach, when the sun was going down, I'm full of focusing on what I'm doing. And then my co-producer goes and says, there's Pierce Brosnan. There's Pierce Brosnan. He's walking by. I said, all of a sudden I got out. I said, Pierce, where, where, where's Pierce? You said, Pierce, where's Pierce? But, oh, I see him and I go, Pierce, Pierce. And he turned around, and we got a shot. He's probably like, who is this? Who is you? Well, no, I, I whispered because he did work with my sister, and actually at one of her family run-throughs before she went on tour, he was sat next to me. So I had met him. He's a doll. And, uh, and it was great. Everybody that was on set that day on the beach was so thrilled to meet him. So thrilled. It was a lovely surprise. I had a question to ask you, and I waited to ask this. Are you kind? I hope so. I try to be. Have you been asked that before? Yeah. Yeah. Does the fact that your name is kind, does that impact your behavior? I don't think so. I don't think so. I used to be embarrassed by my name. When I was a kid in school, it was like, you would read something about, oh, every kind of fish. Or then it was like, you know, because kind was like a regular uh, ver uh, adjective. And I just felt my name is an adjective, you know, when I was a kid. <laughs> and I was embarrassed. I would have liked some other kind of name. But um, no, it's been, it's been lovely to live up to. I hope I live up to it. My plan is to live up to it. My, 
you never know. Sometimes you back step. You try not to. <laughs> but, but I hope for the most part, I'm a good person, a good human being with a lot of love to share. You know, what I really paid attention to was our frustrating half hour of technology <laughs> and how kind <laughs> you were. Because you didn't have to be. I was trying really hard to act like I was keeping it together. But why wouldn't I be? Oh, I want to throw the computer across the room. And I hate technology problems. And this is a big deal to me. No, 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 no. Talking to you is a very big deal to me. I know your catalog. I know your work. I have studied it recently to prepare for this. So to have anything get in the way of my love affair with Rosalind Good was not gonna was not gonna make me really happy. And you were so kind and diligent about trying to work through the issues that neither one of us could have foreseen. It's not like one of us did something wrong. Technology just wasn't our friend. <laughs> no, I, you know, I'm, well, I'm, I'm from the other generation where it really isn't my friend. If you can ask my team, I always get frustrated and they have to end up helping me with everything, with technologically speaking. <laughs> I thought it was interesting too. I uh, you are related to Richard Kind, are you? No, not? I don't know. I where thought that I came read from. you were. Somebody said that to me before. I said not that I'm aware of. Isn't that funny? I read that you were. It's out there somewhere that you were. And I saw him on TV last night. I went, oh, I mean, it must be. <laughs> we have the same initials, but I mean, I I I have no idea about it. I don't know. No. The, and and I recently we had our ancestry done, and he didn't come up in it. Hmm. I didn't do it for him. I did it for me to learn about my ancestors because I was such a late in life child. My father was 57 when I was born. So I was a late in life child. And so my grandpa, I never knew my paternal grandparents or anything. And I only knew my maternal grandparents for a few years. So the um, shock that I read something on the World Wide Web that was incorrect, Rosalind. Can you imagine <laughs> that that would happen? Yes. I mean, <laughs> absolutely amazing to me. So well, your sister has written a book called My Name is Barbara. Mm -hmm. What's your book going to be called? I don't know. I haven't planned one. I've got too much to do outside of that to even think about it. Maybe one day I'll think about but it. But I think, I think you love words, though, don't you? You're a words person, aren't you? A what? A words person. Don't you love words? Don't you oh, love words? Language? I love words. I love words. You know, and I, I, when I was a kid, I wrote a book about my sister's career when I was in eighth grade because we had to write books and we had to do the whole thing. We had to write it. We had to do the borders. We had to make the hard covers. We had to make the paper cover. Uh, and we went to the principal and I got like four stars, five stars on it, A++++. plus plus plus. Uh, I would and, really hope you weren't and, too well on that. And my English teacher said, may you be the writer of the year. She gave me 10 years to be a writer. But I'm much better speaking than I am writing. I, what is it, when I write, I take such pain to pick the words wow. that I want that it doesn't just flow out of me. But when I talk, it flows out more. Well, you've got the word, though. It, it kind of is the theme, the pain and, and the pain that you do experience just being part of a world that's imperfect mm -hmm. yeah. and how you're trying to fix that. I'm encouraging you. I will share with you, as Barbara may have shared with you, the process of writing. Mm -hmm. Your book is probably the most cathartic thing you will probably. ever do. And there are things that come out of me that I don't remember that suddenly at a weird moment I'll remember something. Because I, so many times I used to talk about my career, and I said, well, always leave out the fact that I worked with Charles Aznavour. They said, what's wrong mm -hmm. with you? Don't you remember? Because <laughs> I'm not so much into self that way. You know, I'm in, I'm in the uh, moment. No, I can see that. Because even in this, you're pushing out from yourself. I mean, you're answering the questions, and I'm trying to get to know you. But so many of those answers have been outside of you. Because that's what bothers me the most. And I would, mm. I would love very much to contribute to making this world more positive place to be and to grow up and fix the climate and the future for the kin, the kids and the kids and kids, kids and everybody. Instead of worrying about whether we're going to still be here in so many years, you know, I like to know and be, be assured that this will be a, a good and better world than it is right now.
it feels good because I made that decision as well. And I've had two books, I've had a podcast, and I made a choice that I want to look for the best mm -hmm. in people, which is what I'm doing here today with you and enjoying it tremendously. And it's not always the easiest thing to do, is it? I yeah. mean, it's it's to, to maintain optimism, but I also am aware that the energy, what I give out... Mm -hmm. Comes is back. positive. Yeah. And it comes back. I mean, mm -hmm. I, for so many years, I think the wrong people were involved in my life. And I always look to say, I say to God, I said, now that it seems like I'm, I'm attracting the people that are more like me. As mm -hmm. I've grown well, on my journey and my betterment as a person, all of these wonderful light filled people are surrounding me now. And it feels so incredible. Why? What What? What you did, do you know what you did? Did you shift what your behavior? You know, it's just, well, sometimes you know, somebody used to say to me that sometimes, you know, uh, bugs are attracted to light. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. You know, that yep, they want, yep. they come to the light to make the, but to, then they try to drag you down. You know what I mean? But when you oh, have, when, yeah. and so they come in masquerading, but they're really not like, you know what I'm saying? And mm, you have oh, to, I most assuredly know as, what you're saying. As you grow as a person, you realize what's wrong, what's right, what's, no, this isn't right for me. And, this, and you speak up and you change and you, you have to weed out sometimes people that aren't right to be in your life. Because if they can't add to your life and make it joyous, why are they there? But I think you're like me that we forgive and we make excuses for people. It's true, but they have yeah. to forgive, and then you've got to move on to be with those who are really filled with light and really mm -hmm. bring you joy. Benefit of aging. Yeah. Benefit of aging, certainly a benefit of aging. Yeah. What do you still want to do? Okay, I want you to write a book. I've gone on record with that. <laughs> what do you want to do? And this can be professionally, this can be personally. Is there something, something in particular that you feel you can do or want to do to add to your goal of contributing positively to the world? Well, I see, you know, I, I want to continue in my, you know, recording and I have people writing songs now, uh, also with my message that I want to deliver, but maybe more modern that are writing songs mm -hmm. for me to record. So I'm going to do that. And I've always had, I want to do a, a major, like a one woman show that is about bringing hearts together kindness, the whole thing. And it's so funny. It's like I see my name everywhere now, you know, not having to do with me, but realizing how important that word kind is and how easy it is to be kind. There's your book title. You know? There's your show title. It's called Kindness. Yeah. I mean, in all serious, I'm not really making a joke. No, it's not. It, you know, it, it's just, it's floating around. And it's just staring me in the face. But for several years now, I said, I really want to put together a show that is all about healing. And healing starts with love and kindness. I'm very lucky that I'm one of my very best friends is Peggy Post from the Emily Post Institute. And Emily Post, I'm sure you know of that legacy mm -hmm. as well from the, from the book, the <laughs> book of the last century, but kindness is yes. Peggy's word. And living up to that word again, just because you want to be a better person, it is certainly an effort to continue to do that. And, and I know that. And I do want to encourage people, hey, if you slip and you judge and you do something wrong, take responsibility mm -hmm. and, and move on because it, it is an effort. And it's never, ever, there's no expiration date in our ability to contribute. That's right. That's I, right. I've lived in Florida with a lot of people who were much older than me. And the people who were happiest were still contributing and learning yes and making a difference There's, in other people's it's lives it's like i have the, the thing where i'd rather give than receive you know what i mean it's such a, a joy when you find something you know that something you know somebody you love would love to have and it gives me the pleasure and the excitement even wrapping it up to see you know more so than if i get something <laughs> you know sharing and giving from your heart from your love I'm really not into material things, but it's just joyous to know, oh my God, so and so would love this. And to be able to, good. yeah, that it gives me good. joy. 
Oh, Rosalind, 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 you've just made my day. <laughs> I encourage everyone, rosalindkind.com, I believe, is your website. Am I yes. correct? Correct. That is your website. Please search for this new music. It is luscious. Hashtag luscious. It is wonderful. This is such a treat. I really, really hope that this is not our only interaction. Oh, thank you. I think you. you were profoundly special. And it was an honor. And just, I, I will say, when I get to take the time to really explore somebody's work who I already admired and get to explore their work before I have these conversations, it's it's a really cool thing <laughs> to do. <laughs> well, I thank you too, Randy. Thank you so much. It was Getting past what we got past and having this lovely conversation has been a, pl a pleasure. But I have one more thing to ask you. My final question. What's the final question? Is it like a Groucho Marx thing? What? Rosalind Kind, what do you know? What do I know? I know that love is the answer. I can. I sound like a broken record, but love is the answer. For more information, visit onthenose.com. Please be sure to follow On the Nose with Randall Kenneth Jones on YouTube and subscribe on your preferred podcast platform. For On the Nose, I'm Susan Bennett, the original voice of Siri. And yes, I know. Do you? If not, see you next time. <laughs>